by Fuen O'Keefe and I'm fishing the Goblin River here um, just outside, outside of uh, Shepparton and uh, it's about 6 30 at night so I'm hoping to get the last couple of hours I get before it starts to get dark hoping to catch something eh, at the moment anything um, in that time frame got worms got a bit of bread got some shrimp um, got some corn so I've got a bit of a variety but I always start with worms because they're usually a uh, pretty universal bait and uh, it's absolutely beautiful setting although it's very hot it's about 36 degrees when I last checked so even at that time of night yeah, there's a bit of uh, burny in the uh, in the sun so <laughs> I have to deal with that but I just want to show you something really interesting here um, if I just come over here so if you have a look here there are these bees everywhere right on the bank here and um, they're just obviously drinking the water but uh, I, I would imagine the reason that they're attracted to this area here is because they, um, maybe there's a bit of salt in the soil itself but um, they've been buzzing around everywhere um, I haven't come into contact with one so far so I'm happy about that but it's just interesting to see they're, um, they're everywhere there's literally hundreds of them along the, uh, the riverbank now the, uh, <coughs> the the yabbies out here are amazing like you, you put your, your worm in and within about two minutes um, it's, <laughs> you, it's being stripped from the hook so um, unfortunately I'm going to have to try a couple of different things but also I'll give you an idea of um, just how close in I'm casting I've got one rod which is cast further out into a sort of a, a, um, a slow moving spot sort of further up the river and then I'm casting one in which is only a couple of rod lengths out I've just missed the fish I hooked it but it got off the hook the trouble is I haven't got much reaction time so I've got to have to drag something a little bit light which means you've got to manage the drag to make the strike properly so I hadn't struck into it but I know that as the, uh, the light levels come down the fish do come in closer so sometimes all you need to if you're quiet don't pound around on the bank you can fish in only a couple of rod lengths out and the fish will naturally come in close as it gets darker the challenge you have then is that you've got to be able to um, strike into them uh, you've got to be able to play them if there's snags around and things like that they're going to take off and you haven't got much line out there so you've got to manage all of that properly but look it can be exciting times and uh, if you do it properly you'll get a few fish in Now the other great thing about casting in close is that you can you can throw in the burley and everything around your bait so um, often you don't even need the burley cage if it's close you're throwing the stuff in so it surrounds your your hook bait and I mean if you're, if you're really accurate with that if you throw in your uh, um, bits and particles of food and um, your burley it will attract the fish to that spot and even if you miss one others are going to come because you're going to have something very very close to you, um, your hook bait so with some luck the fish will come continuously um, if it's a good waterway and there's fish about and I'm not sure if this is a, a yabby or a fish they're pretty big tugs but it still could be a yabby oh it was a fish This is probably a carp, I think. Yeah, it's a carp, alright, so let's get my net. Splash, splash. So, not a super big fish. <laughs> Plenty of fight in there, you know? And um, this was really close in. So the good thing is, 
if you can if you can throw the burley in really close, um, you can get those fish because you're making sure that you've got everything really close to your hook bait. Okay, I'll try and get him out and show you. Okay, okay there we go. That's him. And uh, not a super big fish, maybe. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe this is a uh, kilo and a bit, kilo and a half, something like that. Um, but uh, picked up a good fight in the current, and that's what we're up to. Whoa! And I didn't drop him. How do you like that? Catch. I'm getting a little hit on this rod here um, quite often now, and this is the close in one. So I've missed a couple of fish, I've got them on this before. And um, what I've also been doing is I've been experimenting with, um, with some burly pellets. So I have um, my, if you've seen my website, you know that I sell the, the Bite Hard Burley, which is in powder form, so it's pre mixed, all you have to do is add water. Well, I'm experimenting with some pellets here, um, which I have been uh, using over the last year or so. I'm pretty happy with those. Today, it's, um, it's got fish. I think it's got activity around this rod, most certainly. So that's what I've been throwing in. And they're made, they're made with a number of organic materials. So they will attract Australian natives, eels, red fin, uh, and carp. And also, they have salt water. I've used them off piers and they've been really good for brim and for valley. So um, they are working well and I'm using it here, just throwing a little bit out of time and uh, that is certainly getting some activity. I went into another one and it's, uh, it's gone right to the top, right into the current. So it's not a big fish, but it's uh, working the current against me. So, yeah, get another one that uses this current. I just get, uh, get my net. Oh, oh, yeah. He's a bit heavier than the last one, but uh, well, do they use that current well? So, this one's bigger. Yeah, most definitely. Just get him out. Okay, that is him. So, uh, took a bit to get him in because he was using the current very well. And uh, this is a bigger fish, so better fight. <laughs> so, anyway couple of fish in the session, not bad, I wish they had been something else, but I'll tell you what, um, I do enjoy catching, especially in the current, you know, especially on uh, lightish gear, pretty good. This is on the this is a real one, I think. Yeah, it is. Cool. Very small, very small fish. Okay, yeah, there's even small ones about. Little one. There you go. Not much fight, but you know, it's another fish. Yes, another one. And being in nice and close, <laughs> it sort of taps things a bit. Uh, Oh, it's not a bad, it's not a bad It's actually bigger than I thought. Yeah, it hasn't, it hasn't fought until I got him in a bit close. Now he's decided to wake up. Oh. Oh, I have to net this one. Get my net. Oh. 
just bent my neck. Oh. This is bigger than the other. Okay, right. This is <laughs> this is a big fish. Oh, geez, I'm guessing seven kilos, something like that. Okay, this is a fish that I just hooked. Oh, wow. I'm figuring about seven kilos or so. My goodness, this is a big fish. And he didn't fight until he got close in. And uh, then, of course, he did all the damage, which also included bending my net. Great. Okay, I need a new net. Uh, well, I went to another one here, but he's really run me into a snare. I think I can get him. Oh no. Get my net again. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Another decent sized carp. Boy, there's a few about, and this uh, this this burly and close in fishing is really doing the job. See if I can get this one out. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. That is him. Another reasonable sized fish. So, not bad in this session. <sighs> A couple of these. Didn't think I was going to get this one out because of the, uh, the snag, but that's not bad. Anyway, it's starting to get dark now, so. I might go. But look, if you've enjoyed this, please give us a thumb up, thumbs up, and also subscribe. Okay, and for any of the gear you've seen here, for the burley that I've been using, burley cages, have a look at my website, hadapish.com.au.